Oh, I've been recording. All right, well, what's going on, guys? Bengal here today. Okay, screwed up. Listen, we're going to rock with it. We're doing a fantasy draft rebuild today. So there are a number of different ways I could go about this. I could just take, you know, purely young talent, which I think I'm probably going to lean toward. But also, depending on what pick we have, if I could get a top five quarterback in the game, I could just try and win right now. So it's do I want to build up our team so we're going to be amazing in year two or three or three or four maybe or do I want to try and win right now and just keep going with what we have every year try to win the Super Bowl for four years in a row depending on what pick we have depending on what quarterback we can get could be very difficult and I'll tell you this if I can't get one of the top five or ten quarterbacks in the NFL if I pick it like number 25 30 overall as I seem to always do when I do a fantasy draft I'm not going to take a quarterback for 30 rounds. I'm just going to take other great players. Team doesn't matter. It's all about the uniforms, which we're probably not going to play at all anyway. What's a team I haven't done in a while? Um, I am a Giants fan. Should I just use the Giants jerseys? Eh, let's go for it. Why not? Of course, if you've never done a fantasy draft before, you just have to make sure that the starting point for the franchise is fantasy draft and make sure that you're loading in with the active roster and not any real life week. If you guys are new here, would absolutely love for you to hit the subscribe button. We are on the path to 300,000 and let's see what pick we have. Number 16, so we're out middle of the pack. Michael Thomas is headed to the Bucks, and what quarterbacks are gonna be available? I'm not taking someone that's 30 years old unless it's like Aaron Donald. So Tom Brady's available. Okay, I gotta take a quarterback here, very obviously. Now, which is the best one? I'm in between two. Like Tom Brady is the most accomplished quarterback of all time. He is also 43 years old. It's not going to happen. Aaron Rodgers, arguably the most talented quarterback of all time. 36 years old. Not going to happen. Russell Wilson, great player. He's 31. I'm not really feeling it. We're probably in between two. Deshaun Watson, who's only 24 years old. Superstar development is very, 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 very good. Josh Allen. Had a crazy, crazy, crazy good 2020. He's only 24 years old. Also superstar development. Maxed out throw power. Faster than Deshaun Watson. I might take Josh Allen here. In fact, I think I'm going to. Let's get 99 overall Josh Allen in the future. I am very happy with that pick. I feel like that's a, a really good move for us. Round 2, pick 17. Tackles are also pretty important, but this is where I have to focus on getting younger players. Laramie Tunsil wouldn't be that bad if I want to go tackle. Makai Becton is going to end up being really, really good. What are positions that always go early? Wide receiver could be big. DK Metcalf, I'm very interested in. Terry McLaurin for the same reasons. Corner? Corner is very tough. These guys go very early. Marshawn Lattimore is probably who I'm leaning toward. Only star dev, but he's still very good. Linebackers, I feel like, last a while. Might look to the edge. Might look for some edge rushers. I want a, a player who's decently young, but Cleo Mack is also 97 overall superstar X-Factor, so he's going to be really, really good still. Khalil Mack wouldn't be a bad idea. In fact, that might be who I take. Brian Burns is available too. Tell you what, I'm going to go DK Metcalf. Superstar dev, only 22 years old. I think he's also an amazing pairing with Josh Allen. And I've just never really used DK Metcalf that much. So DK Metcalf is the pick. We're picking him up as well. More amazing young talent. Superstar dev. The Giants jerseys and DK Metcalf look very, very, very odd. And his arm skin tone doesn't match his face at all. The lighting is something else. Round three. I hope Brian Burns is still available. That would be my dream pick. Also, Isaiah Simmons is here. We know how much I like that. So, Brian Burns was taken. Makes me very sad. So is Khalil Mack. He's been taken too. Running backs last a while. I don't really want a running back with any of my uh, picks around here. I want someone who's really, really good. Really young. Justin Simmons kind of fits that. Oh, this is boring, but Tristan Wirfs is only 21 years old. 89 overall. That's a 99 overall tackle. And tackles are really, really tough to get. Am I going to talk myself into taking a tackle? That's so boring. I'm sorry. It just is. I think... Ooh, Roquan Smith is here. I also see Justin Jefferson. But I just took DK Metcalf. Um, I think I want Tristan Wirfs. 
He's just a really, really amazing young tackle. They're tough to come by. So we're going to make the smart pick and protect our quarterback. Tristan Wirfs is my pick. 89 overall. Star or better development for just the 21-year-old right tackle who had an all-pro type year for the Bucks, And he will build up our offensive line. As now I try to figure out what we take here. I feel like our draft has gone fairly well. We've gone all offense so far, which is really unlike me. I usually always build defense up. But, I mean, there's so many good young players we can get. I don't really feel forced to take any of them right now. So, there are very few superstar dev players still available. Especially those that are actually good. I think, who's going to be the last one? Is Alimar Pet star? He's superstar. Corey Davis has got to be star. Alright, so all the players above Corey Davis are superstar dev. I, re I would really like to get Isaiah Simmons. I don't really want a lot of these players up near the top because they're older. I think with this pick, though... I'm going to take Roquan Smith. Only 23 years old. He will be a 99 overall at some point. Going to build up the defense now. Roquan Smith is my pick. Haven't taken a corner yet, and there are none really that appealing to me available. Jerry Sneed, actually. Just because he's a rookie, already an 80 overall. Okay, there's some, there's some decent options still. I kind of want Antoine Winfield Jr. as well. I'm really leaning toward that. But safety is just not super important. Unless I wanted to get really crazy and play him at slot corner or just cornerback in general. Because the corners just, again, are not that appealing to me. You know, no, I am going to go Antoine Winfield Jr. here. I never really have that good of a secondary. And if I can focus on that, we could be in a really good position. Again, cornerback super important. Isaiah Simmons goes to the Cardinals. That was my next pick. It really was. Do I go Wyatt Teller here? Guard is just so boring. I'm not going to do that. I've already taken a tackle. Damn, I really wanted Isaiah Simmons too. Really wanted him. We could go with an Isaiah Simmons type player in Jeremy Chin and potentially play him either a strong safety or middle linebacker. He's a hybrid player for the Panthers and he is built like a linebacker. A little bit light. Let's do it. Let's take Jeremy Chin. Why not? Back to back free safeties here. He's not going to play free safety. But it is his drafted position. Let's go Tremaine Edmonds with this pick. Only 22 years old. Built like a freak. And if I run a 4-3, that'd be really, really good. You can just move him to the outside. Harold Landry's still available. That's someone I've had my eye on for a while. I'm not sure there are any good cornerbacks available. Is Jeff Okuda still here? He is not. Jalen Johnson is probably going to be the best bet. Just because of age and development. I'll actually take Jalen Johnson. We got to take cornerback at some point. He's going to develop to be pretty good. I am so comfortable with all of my picks are deemed to be reaches. Just because these guys are like, they're older. So they're obviously going to be ranked a bit higher. There goes Harold Landry. He's gone. Tremaine Edmonds is also gone. I'm still comfortable with who we took. Jordan Brooks is also someone I would consider as well. But he doesn't really fit if I'm running a 3-4. Only normal dev as well. Even though he had a pretty good year. He had a pretty good year. I've taken nothing on the defensive line just yet. Just none of these guys are that appealing. I mean, Ed Oliver's there. Ed Oliver's pretty good. Might have to do that. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson's, or CJ, whatever he's going by now. Uh, CD Deuce. He is extremely versatile. And I'm looking at him. I'm seeing the build. And I'm saying, that's a cornerback. At least a slot corner. I'm going to take Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. That's also what I'm going to be calling him. And I am going to play him at cornerback, more than likely. I think he's a pretty good pairing with Jalen Johnson. We have two safeties already if we want to keep the guys we drafted at safety to play safety. So, ooh, Elton Jenkins is here. That's also pretty tempting. I'll take Ed Oliver just so I have something at defensive tackle or on the defensive line. Usually, I'm all over taking defensive linemen. But I guess I can just do that in the draft. There goes Devin Bush. That wouldn't have been a bad player to have at all. I'm going to take Wyatt Teller here. Another just super high overall player. If I'm going to build up my offensive line, would like for him to be a part of it. Maybe Elton Jenkins as well. I think the offensive line is decently important. I kind of go back and forth sometimes. But if I can just get these guys I don't really have to trade for, just because they're so good. But then the other side of the coin is I can just trade for some of those guys fairly easily. So what's the point to drafting them here? I don't know. 
Let's finally go running back. Jonathan Taylor's here. He'll have star, better development. He's extremely well balanced. Should be a really good option for me at running back. So Jonathan Taylor is drafted to the team as well. We just a great blend of speed and power there. I'll take Elton Jenkins as well as someone that I can potentially move to tackle if I want to do that. He's got the build for a tackle. He's experienced playing the position. I don't know if he has for the Packers. He definitely did at Mississippi State. I know he's moved around a lot for the Packers. I'm not sure if he's played tackle though. But Elton Jenkins, potential tackle for me. I'm going to go Darnell Mooney here just because. Best receiver in the league, arguably. <laughs> Darnell Mooney, money with two O's. The monster. That is Darnell Mooney. Welcome to the Giants. All right, I'm going Jordan Brooks here. Only normal dev, but he's 22 years old. He's a rookie. And if I play a 3-4, he'll just slide over to inside linebacker. He'll be slightly lower overall, but it's definitely an option. And then if Jerome Baker's still available, I think I'd probably go Jerome Baker here. Just because we do have... Uh, oh, he's just got drafted. That's crazy. We would have had 4-3 eligibility there. Or versatility, flexibility. I don't know what I want to do here. I'm tempted to go Jamal Agnew here just because he has superstar dev, but he's also not a receiver. He's a he's a return man. So I think Gabriel Davis is the pick at wide receiver. Wide receiver is a pretty easy position to come by, so I don't usually draft it too high. Gabriel Davis seems to be pretty well-rounded. Had a really good year, and we're going to recombine him, reunite him with Josh Allen. Star better development, only 21 years old, 74 overall. Feels like a pretty natural fit. Tempted to go Gerald Everett here. Don't have a tight end. He's young enough with star dev he's not amazing dawson knox is younger 23 years old who would i rather have dawson knox or gerald everett probably dawson knox just because of the age but i don't think i have to take him right now so what else do i take I'm taking a lot of offensive linemen let's go michael on wenu though that's another super flexible guy only normal dev kind of bad but he's also like 22 James Daniels might be a little bit older, like 24. 22 as well, really. That's It's sold. James Daniels. Played center at Iowa, and maybe I'll play him at center on my team. Let's go Devin Duvernay. This is my slot guy. Star, better development. And um, he'll be my third receiver or my potential slot. I like to play my number one receiver in that role a lot of the time. But DK Metcalf already a superstar dev. I think I might just stick Devin Duvernay there. I think Dawson Knox got drafted. Almost positive. He is gone. All right. Let's just take... Let's just take Gerald Everett. It'll be a fine option for us. Welcome to the giant Gerald Everett. He is 26. A little bit older than I'd like. Even though it's not like old or anything. But only like two or three years of development if he doesn't go up in dev trade. I have nothing on the edge. Like I, Alex Highsmith could fill that role. He was okay this past year for the Steelers. Nothing crazy. I don't really love the options. I really don't. But, you know, it's a 19th round. AJ Terrell also wouldn't be the worst option. Only 21 years old. Normal dev, yeah. But he's a 77 overall. Another guy who had a pretty decent rookie year for the Atlanta Falcons. Coverage is okay, but we can develop him. I need somebody to rush the passer, though. That is a glaring hole for me right now. Tack McKinley? Ugh, I don't really like that at all. Does have star dev. He's so bad. Do I have to take him? I think I might have to. I mean, Josh Sweat is definitely better. But the problem with him is that he's got normal dev. He's only 20. I'll take him. Josh Sweat. I'll come back for Tack McKinley if he's available. Tack McKinley is still available. Uh, all right. <laughs> we'll take him. Time to get the best kicker in NFL history. Justin Tucker. Hook em horns. Welcome to the Giants. Now, what might be big brain is to take a 3-4 defensive end that really is a D-tackle, like Kingsley Kiki, for example. 78 finesse moves. Justin Matabuike would be okay, too. Mm, let's go... Let's go Kingsley Kiki. Kyle Duggar could also be a cool player because of his versatility as well. Could also consider him an outside linebacker. Love athletes. We're taking Kyle Duggar. We'll figure out a spot for him. It might just be backup. It might just be depth. We're in the 25th round. Are there any even okay younger pass rushers still available? We're going to be hard-pressed at this point. All right, we'll go 
we'll go Caleb on chase on. He is super young. Got a lot of potential. Only normal dev, but we'll go Caleb on chase on. And we'll go Damian Lewis just for offensive line depth. He could be a potential starter, depending on if I want to make some trades or not. But I think I will take one more pick and then simulate to the end of the draft. What do I want to take with my last pick? There's going to be no good development traits available. Jaleel Adai probably has normal. I don't know how we'd have anything more. How is that possible? I have no idea. Um, not a lot of appealing options here. Trifon Diggs, maybe? That feels terrible. It is. Cam Curl had a really good year last year as well. I think I just might go Jalen Rager here. I've taken four receivers, though. So it isn't the best idea. You know what? We're going Fear Nasir. One of my big draft crushes from 2019. Nasir Adderley. He just hasn't had a good chance yet. <laughs> he's had injuries. He's had injuries, too. But uh, he hasn't played especially well when he's been in. But that will be my last pick. Unless there's like a good punter available. Michael Dixon, Hook'em Horns. Best duo in the league. Double Texas. Double the win. Maybe. I don't know. One of my team leaders wants to talk. That's Jared Veldier. What year is it that he's a team leader? Absolutely not. Hey, you're going to start at left tackle. No, you won't. It's going to be Tristan Wirfs. I'm going to move him over. Elton Jenkins to right tackle. And we'll be set. How do we spawn in with DK Metcalf having an upgrade point, by the way? That feels insane. And also, how does he have better short route running than deep route running? Feels not right. His facial skin tone doesn't even come close to matching his arms. Uh, plus one speed, though, is pretty awesome. And we also got LaShawn McCoy and Lamar Miller. Running backs that had good years in 2014. Obviously, Shady, someone that had, you know, a better year than just 2014. Lamar Miller is, too, but you get my point. They are fairly washed. You got Bo Scarborough, too. Uh, I want to change James Daniels to center. Damian Lewis will play left guard. So I think this team actually looks pretty good. I've changed everyone's position where they need to be. Jeremy Chin's going to play outside linebacker. I like Kyle Duggar better at safety than uh, than Jeremy Chin. So I'm just going to leave him there. And then the defensive line is clearly the weak point. The secondary is going to be very good in the future, if I had to guess. 81 overall for the offense. And, well, I have to ask you for the team. What is the offense compared to the defense? 84 offense, 79 defense. Really not too bad. Everything is going to come along. Everything is going to be developed because we just have such great young players Chauncey Gardner Johnson as my slot corner that's what I want Devin Duvernay will be my slot receiver no he won't be he's my he's my fourth option so that's not true and then my pass rushers are going to be I don't really want to rush Jalen Ferguson I really don't I really don't he's bad I'm gonna have a uh, sweat McKinley now can I trade anything Maybe. Travis Benjamin's ass. I don't really think I have much on offense to trade. Maybe Patrick McCarry. That wouldn't be a bad player to hold on to for another year or two, though. Maybe maybe Tack McKinley's who I trade, to be honest. Ooh, the Lions got Lamar Jackson. I'm looking for teams to trade him to. Cam Newton's on the Packers. That's a Super Bowl team. I wish that was a joke. The Saints are going to be really tough to beat. And they got Ryan Tannehill. That's going to be a team that does well. The Titans are going to do well. Their quarterback's Jared Goff. They're going to be good. Where do I trade Tack McKinley? Maybe just the... I mean, the Packers are going to be so good. They just are. I'm going to gamble that they'll be bad. It's an end of the first round pick right now. Tack McKinley is headed to Green Bay. It's a fourth this year and next year. And then I guess, yeah, Jalen Ferguson can start on the edge. It doesn't really matter. This first year, I think we will be pretty competitive. But we don't really have to do anything crazy maybe Caleb on chase on will be a rush end so chase on right end Josh sweat left end Ferguson sweat I mean Jalen Ferguson's only like 24 yeah 24 years old Caleb on chase on might be just a better option I'm gonna do it also Darnell Mooney is gonna be my slot receiver not Gabriel Davis 
And that is the last change I will make. And I will see you guys at the midseason mark. We're going to check in, see how we're doing. Should we see who's on which team? Let's just do a quick pan. Quick look. Got the Bears. TJ Watt, Jesse Bates, Denzel Ward. Got some okay players. Bengals got Julio, Joey Bosa, Aaron Jones. Man, they really went all offense. That's not totally true, but they, they have some really good offensive players. It's all their running back receiver combo. Devontae Adams on the Bills. Mitchell Schwartz, Melvin Ingram, Terry McLaurin, Matt Ioannidis. He does feel like a Bill. Zach Martin to Denver. They also have Cam Jordan, Calais Campbell. Some really older players up near the top. Marlon Humphrey, though. Logan Ryan, James Robinson. Brown's got Christian McCaffrey. Their team seems to be pretty solid, but no one particularly amazing. Michael Thomas. Some good players in there. DJ Moore. Cardinals got Teron Armstead. Deshaun Watson. I was very close to taking him. It was kind of like a 50-50. Derrick Henry, Tyron Matthew. Jonathan Allen on the Chargers. The Chiefs got Michael Pierce. Nick Bosa. The Chiefs don't seem to be too good. Colts got Tyreek Hill. Some decent players in there. Cowboys got Jalen Ramsey. That was a, uh, a rumor going into that draft, but it, it didn't end up happening. Justin Jefferson, the Cowboys. The Dolphins don't look that great. Their best player is Brandon Brooks. They're solid. Chase Young would have been a good player to take. Chase Young would have been a really, really good player to take. Eagles got Alvin Kamara. Damn, I wish I would have taken Chase Young now. <laughs> but, uh, of course, we can't, you know, operate on the past. Aaron Rodgers actually ends up on the 49ers. They passed on him for Alex Smith in the 2005 draft. Marshawn Lattimore, that was another thing that could have uh, could happened. Could have happened. Didn't end up. They still keep Raheem Mostert, though. Giants got DK Metcalf. That's my team. Jaguars, Russell Wilson. Man, Jags look kind of stacked. Jags got a squad on him. T.Y. Hilton back to Florida from FIU. Aaron Donald, J.J. Watt on the same defensive line. Ronnie Stanley, Chris Harris Jr., Dante Hightower, Drew Brees. This team is in win-now mode. Lions got Trent Williams, Lamar Jackson, Allen Robinson, Trent Brown. Wow. This is a decent team. Packers, DeAndre Hopkins, Travis Kelsey, 299s for the Packers, both on offense. Fred Warner, too. Andrew Whitworth, Bradley Roby. Panthers got Khalil Mack. How many 90s do you have? Jadavius White, Cameron Hayward, Devin McCourty, Buda Baker. Man, Panthers looking dangerous, too. Pat's got DeForest Buckner, Levante David. He feels like a Patriot to me. Josh Jacobs, Derwin James, AB. He's back in uh, New England. Raiders got Nick Chubb, Bobby Wagner, Quentin Nelson. Rams got Jamal Adams, I, or Justin Simmons, Saquon, Taylor Lewan, JC Jackson. Ravens got Jair Alexander, Darius Smith is back in Baltimore. Kyle Juszczyk's back in Baltimore. They're okay. Football team's got David Bakhtiari, Keenan Allen, Darren Waller, Akeem Hicks, Kareem Hunt, Kareem Jackson. Saints got Mike Evans. Ooh. Saints fans don't like him very much. Laramie Tunsil, Byron Jones, Ryan Tannehill. They will still be good. Miles Garrett, best player in the Seahawks. Kendall Fuller, Adam Thielen, Brian Burns. Wanted Brian Burns, man. Now he's on the same D line with Miles Garrett. Steelers, Stefan Gilmore, Tom Brady, Von Miller, Demario Davis is another win now team. They're trying to win it all. Texans, Patrick Mahomes returns to Texas. Not that Houston's close to Lubbock at all, where Texas Tech is like seven hours away. Chandler Jones, James Bradbury, Ryan Jensen. Titans got Harrison Smith, Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley, Shaq Barrett, Deron Payne. Vikings, Stefan Diggs back in Minnesota. They also pair him with Odell, Genevieve Clowney, Miles Jack, Marlon Mack. And that is it. All right. Now I will see you at the midseason mark. Five and three at the midseason mark, and Jonathan Taylor is frustrated. I don't care. Not going to worry about any of these random expiring contracts. These are not players I want to bring back, except for maybe Patrick McCarry. We have infinite money, and free agency is going to be terrible. So Patrick McCarry is back. Just because maybe I'll trade him at some point. Maybe that'll happen. We're five and three, so we're doing fairly well. Chad Beebe, big upgrade. Son of legendary Buffalo Bill Don Beebe. His son unites with Bill Stud, Josh Allen. And let me go ahead and spend some Coach XP here. Let's do, let's do DB, and then I'll probably come back for linebacker. D-line, I'm not 
super worried about right now just because we don't really have any good D linemen. We have Ed Oliver, but eh, eh. We have made the playoffs, 10 and six. Gabriel Davis is up to a 78 overall, maybe. Yeah, 78 overall. It doesn't always go up when you change their non-best attribute, but I want his route running overall to improve. Tim Boyle up to a 60. That could be the make or break difference between going deep in the playoffs and not. Our offense is up to an 88 overall. So clearly guys have gotten upgraded quite a bit. Josh Allen, 4,200 yards, 34 touchdowns to nine picks. Very good year. Jonathan Taylor didn't really get a ton of carries, but was good in his attempts. 4.1 yards per carry. It's all right. Darnell Mooney went off. 1355 yards, receiving a 95 catches, 8 TDs. DK Metcalf didn't do a whole lot because he wasn't in the slot. So maybe I'll move him there next year. 69 catches, nice. Defensively, Roquan Smith, 126 tackles, but no sacks, no picks. That is so weird. Josh Sweat had 15 tackles for loss, 6.5 sacks. Led the team. Man, my defense was super bad. It was so bad. What is the ranking here for yards? Got to be really low. The same, 13th. What about for points allowed? So 318 was the low by the Jets. We're about middle of the pack. Had no sacks, no turnovers. We just didn't really allow that much. Shocker, Cam Newton wins uh, MVP with the Packers. That only happens all the time with whatever team he's on. Cam Newton is broken in sim. I don't know why. I want to figure it out, but I do not know why. He's just broken. NFC Offense Player of the Year is Cam Newton. Josh Allen at two. No Giants other than that. Defense Player of the Year, CJ Mosley. No Giants. Offense Rookie of the Year, Justin Herbert. Taylor at five. Mooney at six. Davis at nine. Defense Rookie of the Year, Chris Barnes. Jeremy Chin at three. Antoine Winfield Jr. at five. Jalen Johnson, 6. Caleb on Chase on 7. Kyle Duggar, 9. This is just the all-rookie draft build. I'm excited to see who goes up in dev trade. How do we not know about Gabriel Davis yet? It's just reset to 500 snaps for all these guys. That's great. Their overalls are definitely improving. Now, see, the defense guys are out here. Did they just get upgraded? Can't be. All right, we'll have to see what happens in the wild card. We got Washington football team. Would love to beat them, and we do. 34-28, and of course, it's the Packers standing in our way. Doesn't really matter if we lose or beat them because this is the draft pick that we have. So either way, that pick's going to be the same, whether it's our pick or the Packers pick. See if we can beat them. Obviously, want to win, and we do. 24-10, the only team standing in our way is the LA Rams. We will simulate to the Super Bowl, and we are there, and it's the battle of MetLife Stadium. Giants versus Jets. Oh my goodness. Up to an 85 overall as a team. Show me the dev trade increases. How is this still hidden? How is this still hidden? I mean, Darnell Mooney had to go up in dev trade. I almost refuse to believe it didn't happen. And then defensively, Jeremy Chin goes up to superstar. Love that. Jordan Brooks was normal. Now he's hidden. He's going to be star dev. Josh Sweat went up to star dev. Antoine Winfield Jr. is now a superstar. Yeah, this team is starting to come together a little bit, huh? All right, Super Bowl LV. Jets won a bunch of games. This is the Aaron Donald, J.J. Watt, Drew Brees win now team. And here we are trying to beat him in the Super Bowl. This is a fun one. Giants, Jets. I wonder if this is ever going to happen in real life. The odds of it happening are not great, especially not now. But we've seen the Yankees and Mets World Series, Subway Series action. They didn't share a stadium, obviously, but same city. This is kind of what's going on with the two East Rutherford, New Jersey teams, Giants and Jets, as we will simulate to the end of the game. Big money. We're up 7-0 already. But they tie it up quickly. Come on, Giants. I'll jump in if I have to. We're down 14-7, 17-7, and we are not scoring. What is going on with the offense, man? Down by 10. It's the fourth quarter. I'm hopping in on offense. We got DK Metcalf deep. You got to assume he's going to win easy. Oh, no. Awesome. <laughs> DK Metcalf is just too much of a beast. 
We've had two interceptions already from Josh. And I say already. There's been a lot of time in the game. Run up the field, X. I'm trying to. Also, who's 57? He's fast as hell. Tyus Bowser? I want DK Metcalf deep over the middle of the field. Block, please. Third and three. Who's getting open? Dude, what is up with this pressure? Thank you, DK, for coming back to the football. Tristan Wirfs is getting abused at left tackle. That's not even J.J. Watt. That's not even Aaron Donald. Can we run the ball here? It's a really bad defensive line to run the ball against. That's kind of a bad call on third down. And I really should take my points here for the field goal. But I'm also just not going to do that. DK back half slant. Would love to go to that. But we're rolling out. Wide open. Decent enough throw. Get out of bounds, Gerald Everett. We're still in it. First and goal. DK one off press. Got him. Touchdown. We are still in this game. Just need our defense to come up clutch. Oh, it's play action. Get to the quarterback, though. It's thrown up and it's caught. T. Higgins. Oh, my God. What is that? Best case scenario, we force a field goal. And they're going to throw the ball. End zone. Intercepted, but out of bounds by Kyle Duggar. That would have been huge. They will settle for a field goal attempt. And they got it. It's 27-21. We're going to jump in on offense. Minute and 15 seconds now to play. We don't really even have to focus on streaking uh, DK Metcalf right now. We can just go outside of Jonathan Taylor, pick up five, get out of bounds. Like, I can streak DK Metcalf. If he wins, we throw it to him. I don't really like that option, though. We're going to roll out. Maybe had circle, but we'll just take the yardage, get out of bounds. Change this play a little bit. Makes Gerald Everett outside a, a decent option. I think that's open, though. DK Metcalf, just catch it, get out of bounds. We're being efficient right now. Step up. I want R1 there. I'm just tempted to just run every play. DK Metcalf, wide open. Allen, put it up. Would love for that to be in stride. Maybe should have bulleted that, but hey, drop it in. Get out of bounds. Second and 10. We can run the ball here. Taylor, just go through him. Decent blocks. Look at the power. That's going to take some time off the clock, which is actually what I want. Third and five. We're just going to run. Look at all the space. Josh Allen. I'm going to slide. We're going to slide at the one. We're going to block Jonathan Taylor, and we're going to throw... Oh, my God. Snap it. One play. Roll out. Josh Allen. Touchdown. <laughs> Oh my God, what a finish. There was no reaction from the safety. Oh my goodness, the sack. I accidentally pump faked. But the extra point is going to win us the Super Bowl with no time on the clock. Oh my God. In year one, we're Super Bowl champions with the Giants. Then I accidentally called a run play. I had to change it with no time remaining and still get the snap off. Did I deserve to lose? Maybe. Was it stupid not to take the touchdown so I could have no time on the clock? Yeah, definitely. Are they really going to score with 15 seconds? Maybe. Probably not. That was way too bold, but it worked out. Josh Allen with a touchdown and two interceptions is your Super Bowl MVP. Sure. Did have a rushing touchdown as well. Some rushing yards in there as well. The field is now just completely empty except for confetti. Is that supposed to be like that? I don't know if I've seen that before. Anyway, DK Metcalf, Josh Allen. Who else is up there? Jonathan Taylor and Roquan Smith going to hoist Lombardi. Roquan Smith and DK Metcalf making sure that their facial skin tones are not even close to their arms. Hey, it's not even close. It's not even remotely even similar. But it's how it is. Super Bowl champions, either way. Do I want to bring back Derek Watt? Not particularly. Free agency is going to have nothing going on. What are the salaries looking like since we did a fantasy draft? Is it just based on where we picked them, scaling down by $2 million every time? And they're just base easy salaries. I mean, if I can't keep this team together, I'm the worst player on the planet. Also, there's a floating iPhone. 
Am I watching Bewitched? Hit show of the 1960s and 70s? <laughs> why am I referencing that? And why is there a floating phone? It's just flipping all around. It's like Harry Potter invisibility cloak. I mean, I guess this is fantasy draft for a reason. LaMarcus Joyner's in free agency. Why do these guys hit free agency? Like, Jordan Lewis is actually worth having. He's 26 years old, star, better development. He's probably not even going to be that expensive. Oh my goodness. He is so acquirable. And we got Jordan Lewis. That was super easy. So we pick a number 25 overall. Turns out the Titans were terrible. Really didn't see that coming. And I want to make some moves. I want to make some moves. Obviously don't need quarterback, but I need edge rusher. I might make a move for decent quarterback class too. Oh my. But I might make a move for an older but still good edge rusher. Khalil Mack is definitely in high consideration. Ah, uh, here he is. Khalil Mack York. Looks pretty good, actually. So I'm close to getting Khalil Mack with Kingsley, uh, Kingsley Kiki and two ones. But the ones just aren't good enough. So I might have to uh, trade somebody and a pick to get a higher pick. Might be one of the receivers. Devin Duvernay might have to go. Devin Duvernay, a three and a future three, gets me a first rounder from the Steelers, which I am cool with. I'm also still trying to trade Jalen Ferguson. Oh, I can totally get number one overall, which will give me so much flexibility to make moves. That absolutely has to happen. Jalen Ferguson, number 32 overall in a sixth, gets me number one overall. Emphasis on fantasy draft here. I can get pretty much any player I want now with number one overall, right? And I want Brian Burns. Boom. Kingsley Kiki, number one and number 13, gets me Brian Burns. I had someone that commented when I made a move for Brian Burns the other day. It's like, did you really just trade two top 10 picks for Brian Burns? Do you really want me to stay in the same position in the draft so I can draft a 76 overall normal dev player? That is never, ever, 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 ever going to be as good as a 23-year-old with superstar development who's near a 90 overall. Drafting players, I like to do it because it's fun, or it should be, but I'm never getting a player as good as Brian Burns. Now, he's on my team. Pass rush going up through the roof. That's what I need to make this team really, really good is work on pass rush. And if I can switch to a 3-4, we're going to be even better. And that would be Brian Burns at outside linebacker. Ed Oliver, Josh Sweat. I don't, I don't really know where everyone would play just yet. It's 4-3 personnel pretty clearly. Unless Jeremy Chin moved back to safety, which we could do. He'd still be good there. He'd be awesome at strong safety. Jordan Brooks, Roquan Smith up the middle. And then Kyle Duggar is depth or a trade piece. I like to move to a 3-4 all the time because 3-4 defenses are just better in the game. It's kind of just the reality. Okay, Jordan Lewis. I know he just signed him. Sign and trade. Classic NBA. Kyle Duggar and Jeremy Chin's going to move back to uh, safety, as well as a second round pick for J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt is aging, but he's also really, really good right now. And I'm trying to win Super Bowl. So, J.J. Watt, welcome to the team. So, this is the way the new team looks right now, which is electric. Brian Burns, Josh Sweat have been moved to outside linebacker. J.J. Watt in the D-line. Listen, if I can get one more good edge rusher, I will be so, so excited. Because an Ed Oliver, J.J. Watt, rush T tackle, Brian Burns, rush end, along with maybe another sick rush end. I don't really need that to be Josh Sweat. He's just not that good. And I struggle to say his name with any type of quickness. It's the SH followed by the S. Just It just kills me. Like Josh Sweat? That sounds like Josh Sweat. Josh Sweat? That sounds weird. I don't know. I don't like it. Where is my trade value, though? Patrick McCarry. Caleb on chase on would be useless in a first round pick. Okay, that's what it has to be. Double green interest from the football team. I know they're, you know, in the same division, but they also don't have anyone worth trading for. So back to the drawing board. Caleb on chase on and Patrick McCarry to football team for number 21. I think I'm also going to trade Nasir Adderley. 
I have almost no picks, but hey, we're going all in. Los Angeles Rams. We're playing to win now. I want to win a Super Bowl right now. I know we just won one, but I also just want to win another one. Nasir Adderley and a second round pick next year gets me a first. And now the name of the game is find an edge rusher I can trade for. Here's also the big issue is that in order to get trades to go through, you kind of need to trade a good player as well. And I've kind of just traded all the good players I had that were worth trading for picks so that I can trade for those players. It's a bit of a mess, but I just need to find out the right player to move. Who's it going to be? Maybe a corner? Maybe AJ Terrell? Probably has to be. Another interdivisional trade. I'm just doing with, like whatever I can. It's number 25. It's projected number 11 next year, which will be way higher or way lower. Excuse me. And a fifth for number nine. I have a trade lined up. It's going to make us near unbeatable. And this is, yes, the least realistic rebuild I've ever done. I'm just doing whatever it takes. And I am getting Nick Bosa. Number nine, number 15. It's going to take AJ Terrell as well. But it should make it go. Boom. Number nine, number 15, and AJ Terrell get me Nick Bosa. <laughs> He's just so good, and my team is so good. The question becomes, would I rather play him at outside linebacker or Josh Sweat? I think probably Nick Bosa is good to stay at right end. He is a monster. And then what's ever available at number 21 overall, I'll just take or trade out if I want to. This is our only pick of the draft. There's a decent receiver available. I like him for his potential. But there's, it's not like a crazy draft for my needs. Not that I really even have any. I'd only really consider cornerback. And all of the good ones are gone. And they also weren't all that great. Let's get J.R. Patterson, 5'10", only 21 years old out of Alabama. Good top skills. He's a deep threat that can fly. 4-3-1 speed. 77 overall. We get the number four player in the class. Star or better development as well. He could realistically be my slot monster this year. Third best receiver. Play him over Gabriel Davis. Who says no? Probably Gabriel Davis, but I don't care. How good was this, was this uh, draft class if number four in the draft was a 77 overall? It was tied for second. Running back was number one, who I don't need. Quarterback, tied for number one, or number two, who I don't need. And then another running back, and then my receiver. The only other option that would have been good was a corner. Mm, he doesn't look that good. I'm very happy with who he took. And the floating phone is back. For sure. We need Josh Allen's general accuracy to improve, so I'm going to uh, upgrade field general while I can. Hopefully get short, medium, deep. That'd be great for my three. We get medium and short. But this team is very, very, very good. Patterson is going to play over Gabriel Davis. If they both end up having star dev, maybe I would lean Gabriel Davis just because it'll be a slightly higher overall. But Patterson will be my third receiver. He will also play in the slot. Should be very, very good. And then we have Nick Bosa, Brian Burns rushing the passer. J.J. Watt, Ed Oliver up the middle. Roquan, Jordan Brooks is my sub linebackers. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson in the nickel. And then defensively, we are just unbelievable. This team's going to be so good next year too. And this year. And every year. Until these contracts expire. We don't really have much in the way of depth. Like there's no great backup running back or backup tight end. So maybe I'll see if I can sign somebody. Ty Johnson will do the job. And uh, we'll see who's there at tight end. Virgil Green. Let's do Josh Oliver because he's 24. And, I mean, Josiah DeGuar is not good, but he's also 24, so we'll bring him in. Oh, it's middle linebacker Jason Cabinda. He's like, I'm a fullback now. All right. So you've seen the team. We're going to simulate to the midseason mark. This should be a very, very good team. I'm excited to see how it's not when we go, like, 2-6. and six. We are 5-3, and three, third in the division. How are we third in the division? We also gave the number one team, who's 6-0, their first loss. Michael Dixon is a free agent. And he's really the only one who's of any importance. And we still have the money to bring all these guys back, so... Like, why not? And Michael Dixon returns. I'm excited to see that receiver's development trait. 
I hope it's superstar or higher. That would be obviously best case scenario. Although I doubt it. It's probably star. Ooh, it's superstar. JR Patterson, superstar dev. We didn't really even see his attributes when we drafted him. But he's got crazy spectacular catch, deep route running, catching. Medium route running is not that good. He's just a monster with the ball in his hands, and he's a monster deep threat. Jalen Waddle. That's who this is. 5'10, 176 at Obama. Jalen Waddle weighs a little bit more. I think Jalen Waddle's probably listed closer to 200 pounds. But he is 5'10. 5'10, 183. He's listed at. Well, there you go. That's actually pretty close. I also kind of want to put my Jalen Waddle clone as receiver two now. So I am going to do that as well. We'll keep going into the scheme fit for James Daniels. This team is absolutely cracked. Love it. Love it. Love it. And then defensively, I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when you face this team? What can you do? Apparently beat us a couple times. We were five and three. Like, what's going on with that? How is any team better than this? Plus one speed into the 90s for Antoine Winfield Jr. You love to see it. This is going so well. This is going so well. Unless we don't make the playoffs. Which would be super sad. Okay, so things actually picked up for the big league boys. First round by 13 and 3, we won out. That's what I like to see. We just got tired of losing after we beat the undefeated football team. We took all of their power and never lost again. <laughs> I love to see it. Stats. We have the sixth best offense. Josh Allen going to put up an MVP type campaign. That's going to be MVP. Second best defense. Josh Allen, 4,400 yards, 44 touchdowns to 11 picks. Rushing Jonathan Taylor was very similar to last year. Wasn't amazing. Receiving J.R. Patterson shattering rookie records at 88 catches for 1,275 yards and 17 touchdowns. Relax or don't. DK Metcalf, over 1,000 yards, 10 TDs. Gerald Everett was also great. Darnell Mooney was also very good. And if J.R. Patterson was my receiver to the entire time, maybe his numbers are even better. Defensively, Roquan Smith had a very good year in this new system, as did my entire defense. J.J. Watt, 16 tackles for loss, also 12 and a half sacks led the way. Nick Bosa, 10 and a half. Burns, only 7 and a half. But everyone got a ton of pressure, so I don't need one person to dominate. Trevor Williams, four picks. Yearly awards, Josh Allen does win MVP with this Giants team. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Josh Allen. Defense Player of the Year, Khalil Mack. Thought about trading for him. Panthers went 4-12. and I still could if I wanted to. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Spencer Jones. J.R. Patterson with 17 touchdowns at number two versus a 4-12 and Seahawks-led team. He just won. It was a quarterback. That's what it was. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Jonathan Barrington. No Giants, obviously. That makes sense. But check, it th check this out. NFL records, season, receiving touchdowns. And there is J.R. Patterson. He's not listed, but he's tied for number 17. Or for third, fourth, with 17. All right, that took a lot to get those words out. I'm an idiot. This team is just cracked. Jonathan Taylor needs to be better. Just be better, please. The system isn't really designed for a running back to do too well. It's just designed to be an aerial attack. What do I even want to upgrade on J.R. Patterson? It's got to be route running. I mean, he's an unreal deep threat. And I'm going to give him a number to match. Amazing deep threats don't wear numbers in the 80s anymore. It's a known fact. 15. There he goes. I never change numbers either, but like, he's a monster. All right, we got we to gotta give him the respect. Plus three awareness. Hell yeah, dude. He's going to be so aware out there. Josh Allen's going to be a 99 overall. Do field general, of course. And he is up to 99 overall with morale. He's also going to go up to superstar X-Factor. He is uh, very good. Okay, let's see who our team's going to be. It's Washington football team again. I'm going to need Invisible Coach to have a good coaching week this week because Washington football team is sneaky. They might be able to beat us. Especially if our coach doesn't show up as he literally hasn't. I, I'm just looking at an invisible phone if I'm even so lucky. Right now, there's nothing. And there he is with the invisible Microsoft Surface. Uh, what a guy. What a guy. I'm not going to play this. We're just going to simulate. Probably lose. There it is. 38-28. Just like my head coach, we didn't show up to play. Jags beat football team in the Super Bowl. And do I want to bring back Trevor Williams? He had a good year. 
But, I mean, you know the answer to that. No. J.R. Patterson definitely just went up to Superstar X Factor. And I would say that Josh Allen did as well. Let's see the upgrades. J.R. Patterson, Superstar X Factor. Oh, he's going to be a 99 overall in his second season. What an absolute crackhead. Ankle breaker, that's lame. Josh Allen also up to Superstar X Factor. He's just an easy 99 overall. This is all that is. And our defense is... What happened here? Something looks different. Mm, maybe not. Yeah, I guess Roquan Smith never had Superstar, and he's not getting it. Pretty good, though. Not going to sign anybody in free agency. Not that I'm going to go past four years anyway, but if I want to sign anybody next year that's going to become a free agent, and they're, they're going to start to be a little bit better. I uh, am going to need the money. We're going to advance the draft. I don't even think I have a first-round pick here. I don't think I have any picks. Yeah, we pick in the sixth round. But that's fine, because my team is amazing. So whatever is there, he won't play. Doesn't matter. Oh, there goes Joshua Allen. Never seen that name before. Is anyone good here? I'll take a backup tight end. Oh, hell yeah, Glenn Drayton. Welcome to the team. What a beast. He actually doesn't look awful. He just looks really not good. There's a difference. Let's see the absolute beast I miss out on. It'll probably be the best draft class of all time because I didn't take a pick in it. Eh, per usual, the best, best players are running backs. It actually wasn't that good of a class. So if there was one to miss, that would be the one. All right, this team's nuts. 92 overall, 93 offense, 91 defense. We have no backups. I could use a backup running back probably. I'll admit to that. We also have no cornerback depth. How did I miss that? Quentin Dunbar is signed. Jalen Rager's cool. I need a I need a backup running back though. Ooh, Wendell Smallwood. Hell yeah. Oh, DeAndre Baker's here. Mister, I'm gonna rob everyone at a party, and then, even though I definitely did it, the lawyer happened to be extorting, so the case was dismissed, and now I can just play in the NFL. Yeah, that was lucky. Okay, this is the team. It's really good. J.R. Patterson's going in the slot. Just because he's just a tank. So I'm going to keep that up. Defense is amazing. I would love for some better sack numbers. But oh, we got Holton Hill, Hook'em Horns, Texas Legend. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see. I don't really care that much about the sack numbers. It's just fun for the stats. But as long as the whole team is getting a ton of pressure, you know, have at it. Actually, you know, let's put DK Metcalf in the slot. Have him go off for a season. I'm in on that. See you at the midseason mark. I'm trying to win my second Super Bowl here. Last year was a big time failure. My team is amazing. No one can compete. Let's actually show it this time. Four and three at the midseason mark, and Justin Tucker is now eligible to be resigned. DK Metcalf is just going to be a 99 overall now. Where did that come from? He was just a 91 like five seconds ago. And now he is a 99. And deep route running has not evolved. J.R. Patterson's almost a 90. I think route running still the move. His short route running is so bad. Let's give him slot. That should be guaranteed short route running. Plus two. Eh, we'll take it. Who's here? Justin Tucker, James Daniels. Oh, okay. Eh, some decent ones. But they're going to be very easy to resign. Gerald Everett is probably someone I'm going to franchise tag. Just because he's 28, he hasn't really developed at all. And I know it's going to be like, how are you going to franchise tag a tight end and pay them like 10 mil a year? But here's the thing. Is that I have the money. I don't care. It's made up. I, it's not hurting me. It's not, oh man, you just gave 10 mil, 15 mil to a tight end. But also, I get to keep him and it doesn't hurt me in the future at all. So why would I not? Simulating down to the playoffs. It better be a playoff team. We just snuck into the playoffs. The Panthers had a big time turnaround. They won four games last year. And now we're like, yeah, hey, we're a 10 win playoff team. And wow, we won the division at 10 wins. There were three teams with 10 wins in our division. Our offense took a big step back. But if history serves, which I hope it doesn't, I don't know where it's working, but if history uh, replays itself, this is not going to be good for this team against the Panthers in the first round of the playoffs. 
I'm getting Jake DeLome flashbacks. This is not good. Josh Allen just wasn't that great because Jonathan Taylor stole his touchdown. Jonathan Taylor was awesome this year. DK Metcalf was quite good, but he was not like J.R. Patterson last year. J.R. Patterson's going back in the slot. Guaranteed. Defensively, Jordan Brooks had a very, very solid year. Roquan Smith, four sacks. Oh, man. The pass rush numbers are up. Nick Bosa, 19 sacks. 15 and a half for J.J. Watt. Five for Ed Oliver. Only four for Roquan Smith. And three and a half for Brian Burns. I might move him to defensive end or something. And J.J. Watt to D-tackle. I don't really know what's happening because... He's playing outside linebacker in a 3-4. He should be getting pass rush snaps. He only allowed 10 catches, so it's not like he was in coverage all that often. I'm confused how the sacks are so low when Brian Burns is amazing. It's extremely confusing. I've never really had that problem before, I don't think. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, five interceptions, led the team. Yearly awards, Mahomes wins MVP. No Giants, NFC Offense Player of the Year, Tua Tungavailoa. Josh Allen at seven, Defense Player of the Year, Chris Barnes, Nick Bosa at three with 19 sacks. Offense Rookie of the Year, Timmy Hardison, we had number two. Glenn Drayton, backup tight end. Defense Rookie of the Year is Jared Inzerma. Ugh, I don't like that last name. Sounds like the next epidemic in the U.S. I'm worried. If you get Inzerma, call somebody. We're going to get quarterback training boost up. And I don't know. Like, yes, I, I get that the 3-4 is mixed results as far as sim stats go but i have no idea why the uh sack numbers are so low josh sweat had zero it's peculiar like i understand i basically have four edge rushers depending on how you feel about jj watt but brian burns is my rush right end maybe i'll switch him and bosa I don't really know what's happening. All right, see if we can beat the Panthers. Sure can. Football team in our way. We only beat the Panthers by three. We beat the football team by a more uh, dominant number. 31-14. And now it's the Packers at Lambeau. And if history repeats itself here, which it didn't against the Panthers, we should actually get the better of the Packers in the conference championship. Shout out Brett Favre intercepting or throwing an interception to Corey Webster in overtime. What a game. Lawrence Tynes, game-winning field goal. Super clutch. Packers fans, I hope you're getting PTSD. And we won. And it's going to be a Giants-Raiders Super Bowl. J.R. Patterson up to a 92 overall with morale. Route running is improving greatly, except for if it's short. That really isn't changing much at all. And then we'll do, a, we'll do Run Stopper for Nick Bosa, who is just unbelievable. Just really, really good. And we'll hop in and try to win our second Super Bowl in Arizona. Just a short drive down for the Las Vegas Raiders. Should be able to win, though. This one, not even close so far. Raiders finally get on the board. Hopefully, I didn't just jinx it. It's 20-7, to and the Raiders just can't score on our defense, really. It's 28 to 7. They finally get in the end zone again. It's a two touchdown game. They could come back, and they are. They are in the process of coming back. 247 to remain. Two remain, and they are punting? In this situation? How? You're punting from the 45 on fourth and three? Down seven in the Super Bowl with two and a half minutes to play? We also have the best punter in NFL history, Gunnar Olszewski. Don't look that up. Unless you only know about 2020, in which case, yeah, Gunnar Olszewski was a monster. And I'm going to throw the football. There's Patterson. Look at the speed. I made it a crazy decision to throw in the ball. But it worked out. He didn't feel that fast on that run. Great block. What? What? What is that? There's about a mile of space to run. I was going to say great block by Jonathan Taylor. And check out this classic BS Madden 21 next gen uh, sack. Oh, there's not a mile of space to run. We're just going to get sucked back into the sack for no reason. Sucked back into the sack. I wouldn't be born if that happened. We're going to go ahead and run the ball here on second and 11. Jonathan Taylor. Oh, look at the speed. 
Jared Patterson touchdown to end the game here. Let's go up and get it. I mean, that was insane. Threw the ball too late. Doesn't matter. Super Bowl number two for the New York Giants here in this rebuild. The fantasy draft rebuild's going extremely well. Josh Allen with another really awful Super Bowl performance. Probably still won MVP because he's a quarterback. But that is two out of three. And according to Meatloaf, that ain't bad. I just, I just love referencing things that no one else is really going to get. Many of you will, though. I got to remember, I have almost 300K. More than just me knows who Meatloaf is. Justin Tucker, salary goes up. Not interested in signing. I will franchise tag you. Even though my, my goal was to franchise tag Gerald Everett. So now I'm a little bit confused about what to do. Damian Lewis is back. Gunnar Olszewski, I just don't care about. What do I do here? Do I just say I'm going to sign Gerald Everett because it doesn't matter? No, I'm going to franchise tag Justin Tucker. And I will... Uh, I'll go after Gerald Everett in free agency if I want to bring him back. I have no depth. But I should actually have picks back. Please go up to Superstar. Jalen Johnson went up to Superstar. Absolutely love to see it. Who else got upgraded? Love plus two zone. I should actually have a first round pick though this year. Probably not going to take it. My team's unreal. 95 offense, 92 defense. Who went up? Mm, Jonathan Taylor to superstar. Love to see that. And then defensively, Chauncey Gardner Johnson to superstar. Jalen Johnson to superstar. The linebackers still have been untouched for the most part. Do I want to move to a 4-3? J.J. Watt D-tackle, Ed Oliver D-tackle, Nick Bosa, Brian Burns, defensive ends, and then Jordan Brooks, Roquan Smith, fill in the blank, outside linebacker. I just feel like 3-4 is so much better, but my personnel kind of screams 4-3. So, I don't, I don't know. Next year's the last season, so money isn't real. I brought in Gerald Everett, DeAndre Swift, Tremaine Edmonds, nope, Terrell Edmonds, and Devin Singletary. So I now have three competent running backs. Gerald Everett, new starting tight end, who's also our old starting tight end, and then Terrell Edmonds as either depth or trade piece. So I want either a stud outside linebacker, or maybe I just stick in the 3-4. I haven't really fully decided on that yet, but I feel like... I feel like it could be a mistake to move to the 4-3. But the personnel has me at least tempted. We've already won two Super Bowls. I might as well uh, experiment and see if we can uh, do that. Best defense was the Packers in terms of points allowed. That's a 3-4. Falcons, they aren't usually good. I think I go to the Bengals. The Bengals are always good. They're a 4-3. We'll switch to a 4-3, test it out. So I've switched to a 4-3. J.J. Watt has actually gone up from a 93 to a 94 overall. Although that might be with morale. But maybe he had a morale impact earlier? So I don't know. I'll give him um, under pressure. And I don't know. Defensive rally is what I had last year. So we'll keep it as it is or as it was. And all I need is an outside linebacker. Which still could be Jeremy Chin. Maybe I get a, a safety. My corners are really awful besides the top two. But this team is so, so good. So we pick at number 32 overall. I really don't want to take anybody. Because who am I really going to even use? Matthew Fitzgerald looks pretty good. I would have to move up to get him. If he's available at the Vikings pick, I will make a move up. Which, it would be stupid anyway. Because I really don't need him that badly. Okay, I mean, they're just great players going off the board. I'll try to make a move. It says we need a left end. No, I have Brian Burns, but okay. Okay, Devin Singletary, a two and a three for number five overall. Just to see how good this guy is. He's not really an outside linebacker. He's just an edge rusher I don't really need, but I'm curious. So I'm going to take him. 76 overall, normal dev. Number five, took him at number five. He's like a good josh sweat replacement and that's kind of all he is because now i can trade josh sweat if i want and he's only only a little bit worse 
and I can actually get a legit like outside linebacker now. Can I get Devin Bush? Oh, I might be able to, you know. Ooh, Gabriel Davis, a two and a three next year for number six. And number six overall should be enough to let me get Devin Bush. Remove Sweat to right end, I believe it is, to boost his value a little bit more. He is an 83 overall there. I think the team that Devin Bush was on, which is a Cardinals, maybe? I think they needed a... It's not. No, it is. It's left end and right end. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. He's just a slightly higher overall at that position too, which also works to my benefit. And I should be able to get Devin Bush. Oh, it's so close. All I need to do is trade number 32 in the draft. I'll, I'll give some team like two first round picks. Why not? For a slightly higher first round pick. Cowboys, Colts. Let's get number eight. Ah, I can't. All right. Two first round picks, one this year, one next year, and a fourth for number 13. And then that's going to use, uh, or that's going to be used to get Devin Bush. And that is just ridiculous because my team is just stupid good at this time. Why am I talking like such a weirdo? Doesn't matter. Josh Sweat is finally gone. Two first round picks, and Devin Bush is now on my team. This is just ridiculous. It was a decent draft class. Pretty solid. Dante Holloway. Ooh, hidden development. Coverage is not great. Just an athlete. So Devin Bush. I thought his overall would go up at outside linebacker. It did not. Roquan still at the mic. Jordan Brooks. Probably my will playing weak side. Defense looks just crazy good. And then the offense, of course, stays the same. Except for DeAndre Swift is there. Receivers are still crazy. This team is just probably the best team I've ever built. And I didn't really even have to build anything. I just drafted it, which I guess counts. But it really wasn't too hard. You know what's actually... Is it a good idea? I'm going to do it. Darnell Mooney in the slot. Just to try and get up or him up to superstar dev to make my team look even better at the end. So Darnell Mooney's going to play in the slot. 92 overall, 93 offense, 91 defense, but it's going to get even better. I could make a really big move for an offensive lineman if I wanted to. Let's do it. Why not? You know, it's the final season. Nothing I've done has been close to realistic, but it's a fantasy draft, dude. Like, is a fantasy draft realistic? I don't know about that, but I might make a big move for an offensive lineman or a tight end. Do I have picks? Kind of. Not really. <laughs> In today's awful Madden trade logic trade of the day, Damien Lewis straight up for Zach Martin. Pretty good replacement. Oh, and we can get Travis Kelsey too. Please, 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 please. Oh, it's close. I might need a higher pick to make it work, which I can do. Oh, we have a future too. <laughs> I'll just work with that. Okay. This is going to work. Terrell Edmonds. A second and a first next year for Travis Kelsey. And I don't know how you get better than this team. I've just made it unbelievable through nearly any means necessary. Zach Martin's going to move to left guard. This team shouldn't lose a game. This is the offense. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. And then the defense is also all right as well. Definitely okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, you can't have the best team all the time. But 95 overall, 99 max out offense, 91 defense is all right. I stopped my simulation at week eight just before the trade deadline in case I wanted to do anything. We're five and one. So I would say we are on good pace to make the playoffs. And I am considering a big move for a defensive back. Probably a corner. Probably a corner. But what would I do? I would have to trade one of my backup corners, which I have a fair few. Signed some guys before the season started. Darius Phillips, Javarius Ward, and Greedy Williams. So I could trade one of those guys. I would need to trade for a super old corner so the trade value is not good. I don't think it's possible. I just wanted to test it out, see for a minute. All right, Greedy Williams and a third for Darius Slay. It is an upgrade. It is an upgrade. He's old, though. I don't know where he plays. Purely because like we have Jalen Johnson... I mean, he's 
Same overall. He's just a good third corner. First round by. We have a lot of upgrade points. How do we do those as a team? One loss? 14 and 2. So we lost another game this season. Third best offense. And it seems like our defense was actually pretty good. Sixth in terms of yards. Josh Allen, 4,500 yards, 39 TDs to nine interceptions. Jonathan Taylor was very good as well. 1,100 yards, 5 points, super carry, nine TDs. Receiving Darnell Mooney. Almost 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns. J.R. Patterson was a beast. D.K. Metcalf was very, very good as well. Travis Kelsey. I mean, is that a 99 overall tight end? Mm, not really playing like it. But that's not a terrible season considering all the other monsters on this offense. 800 yards for a tight end, solid. Just not Travis Kelsey, solid. Roquan Smith was quite good. J.J. Watt, 15 sacks, and look at the overall production from my D-line. 13 sacks for Brian Burns, led the way. J.J. Watt, 12 and a half. Nick Bosa, 10 and a half. Ed Oliver with five. Really, really good from this team. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, six picks, led the way. Darius Slay came up with five. I don't know how many were on my team. Three for Jordan Brooks, two for Jeremy Chin. So we made some really good acquisitions. Three defensive touchdowns, all coming from the secondary. And then yearly awards. Kyler Murray wins MVP. Josh Allen at two. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Josh Allen. Defensive Player of the Year, Fred Warner. No Giants. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Jaqueline Sweet. Antoine Pryor, whoever that is at five. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Devontae Avant. A lot of Avant in there. Uh, but we are going to be in the divisional round of the playoffs. 99 offense, 95 defense, 97 overall. It's a heck of a team. They get upgraded even more and play with morale. This could be a 99 overall team. J.J. Watt's going to retire, which is fine. We get a morale boost, and we just try to win the Super Bowl. Plus 20 morale. I love it. Ooh, Donovan Peoples-Jones gets upgraded. This is an easy win over the Bears. Please, 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 please. All right. <laughs> I saw this. I thought we got eliminated. 38-17. Two games away. Yes, we all want J.J. Watt to win a Super Bowl. That's what it is. It isn't about the team. It's, about all, it's all about J.J. Watt. Jordan Brooks is going to go up to an 86 overall. I thought he would have been better, by the way. I thought he would have been up to a higher overall by this point. Superstar dev. Just never ended up happening. Still really good, but just didn't get up as high as I thought he would. And we are one game away from the Super Bowl. Here we go. Got to beat football team. We did it. And now we have to face Patrick Mahomes... And the Houston Texans. That sounds weird to say. But we made it all the way. 97 overall. The offense or the defense never ended up moving up at all. Darnell Mooney does go up to superstar dev. Jonathan Taylor's at a 95 overall. Look how sick this team is. And then defensively, still looks pretty good. <laughs> still looks pretty good. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson's up to a 95. Jeremy Chin, 97. Antoine Winfield Jr. is up to a 99. Kind of didn't even notice that. Linebacking core is great. D-line's amazing. Brian Burns is up to a 99. How do we lose? How do we lose? Can't wait to find out. But this team is nuts. Easily the best team I've ever built in this game. The Houston Texans are a really, really good 87 overall, and they aren't even close. 97 overall. Good luck. They have Kenny Galladay. All right, we got to beat Patrick Mahomes. Playing in Minnesota. In the Dome. Let's see what happens. At U.S. Bank Stadium. Would you call it a Dome? I would, even though it's not dome-shaped. We're up 7-0. Make it 10-0 early. 17-0 to end the first half. Texans still can't get on the board. It's 20 to nothing. Texans and Patrick Mahomes lay in a goose egg. They get three, though. It's not going to matter. <laughs> it is all over. 34-16 is your final for the third time. I believe third time, right? Yeah, third time. The New York Giants are Super Bowl champions. Bill O'Brien still the head coach in Houston. Patrick Mahomes saved his job. But just like this past Super Bowl, Patrick Mahomes does not come up victorious. And maybe because he had Jeremiah Noteboom blocking for him. I always call him Jeremiah. It's Joseph Noteboom. I, I always do that. I just remembered. Uh, Nick Bosa, three sacks. He gets Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, I don't know how you beat this team, man. 
We had an unbelievable defensive line. Probably ravaged the Houston Texans. We had an unbelievable set of corners. Linebackers were crazy. And Josh Allen, DK Metcalf, Jonathan Taylor, and Roquan Smith deserve to raise it. Lombardi high in the sky. As for the third time in four years, the New York Giants are Super Bowl champions. I would say this fantasy draft rebuild went pretty well. It was clearly a fantasy style rebuild. Nothing about it was realistic at all. But, I mean, we crushed. Josh Allen, again, was just not good at all. Jonathan Taylor crushed. Josh Allen had two rushing touchdowns. Damn, Irv Smith went crazy. DK Metcalf was okay. Who had the one receiving touchdown? Nobody? I thought he had one. No, I guess not. And then defensively, three sacks for Bosa, one and a half for Burns, one and a half for Oliver, interception for Devin Bush. I'm not sure how you beat that team. But this is the final team. Get a good look at it. It is crazy. And I'll never build a better team. Never will. We have two 99s on the O-line. The rest are all 90 or higher. This is morale included, by the way. We have a 99 in Travis Kelsey. 99 in DK Metcalf. 99 in Josh Allen. The rest are just mid to high 90s for the most part. And then defensively, we have a 99 in Antoine Winfield Jr., in Nick Bosa, in Brian Burns. And all the rest are low to mid 90s jordan brooks is an 87 he's the lone 80 on the entire team and then specialists tucker and dixon are in the 80s but that's also like the highest in the league this team was cracked hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already for more craziness i guess and i'll see you in the next one take it easy Back to the house, defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.